I'm going to try to not get a lot of ink on my cutting mat, but I'm going to use something we can really see. I think I can clean the edge of that when I'm done. I don't know if you've ever done this in school, but it's an easy way to enlarge something if you don't have any kind of a projector and if you don't want to just draw freehand. I would probably actually draw this cow freehand, but um, Kim's cow. But I thought there might be people that would want something a little more precise to help them with their enlargement. So now I have this and he's got a grid in green and I'm gonna put a grid with pencil on my cloth that I'm gonna paint and it'll serve as my canvas. I do like to just press these together. It makes for sort of a nice smooth surface for drawing uh, and also painting. Okay, so I have a piece of um, cotton and it's not pre-washed and neither is my batting and this is warm and natural and my live area on my piece is intended to just really double this. This is about nine and a quarter so 18 and a half inches by seven and a half inches which doubled would be 15 so I'm going to make it essentially twice this uh, height and twice this width which really makes four times the area so I have I'll have to quilt and do four times the size of you know most of a sheet of paper is the size of my piece so I'm just going to draw out this grid and it's going to be two inches So I'm starting over here where it's easy and all I'm doing, and I have a partial grid for the actual picture and so I'm just trying to imagine that that's now background. Um, but I'm just trying to, if I look at my square where this ends is this is the halfway point. It's a little bit past the halfway point. Okay, so this is my half square here. And this is my half. And then this is a one and a one and a one. And so, uh, you know, and there's probably a better way to do this than, than the way I'm doing it. Um, and so, yeah, if you have a better way, go ahead and do that. And, you know, the lines on a cow aren't going to be that perfectly straight. See, this is supposed to be pretty small over here, so I think this is actually off. You can kind of erase enough that you'll follow your proper lines. So I'm trying to get um, this side of him drawn. I hope you can tell what I'm doing. I'll probably speed that part up. And then this square, if this is the halfway mark and this is the halfway mark, this is going to kind of come up and then kind of come down is what it looks like to me, but it's really faint. There's a lot of white back there. Sort of cow blends right into the white background. And then somehow his back's going to come underneath his tag. And when I get to this piece, I can just uh, want to make sure it's the right one. And then I can draw that tag. So if I think in my mind about 
where that piece is. Of course, if you have what you're trying to do and it's already big enough, then all you need to do is put it on a window and tape it. And mine is taped on the edge of the window because I have UV um, film on this window so that it will tend to not let fabrics in the room fade. But I would just kind of get these and this is really more the way I would draw, even uh, sketching. And of course, I've done these horses more. I kind of like a little bit of squareness in the face and have them look, I like them to be a little more muscular. All right, I'm calling him good enough. So I'm gonna make him primarily green. That's almost all dried up. What I've learned is that these paints will do the job. I let my kid use them a bunch uh, quite a while ago, and I consequently have a lot of dried out paint, except for the ones I've replaced. Maybe he'll be blue, because I, I did get this nice, I think it's this nice blue. Maybe we'll do, how about blue instead of black? See if maybe I can add a little black towards the end if I need to. So I'm just going to put some paint out and see what happens. I do like having the tan mixed in. So I'm going to get one that I think is in good shape. This is a metallic rust, it says. So I'll put some of that out. All right. I'm no artist, you guys. I just do this stuff to try to make stuff that, see if I can do it, see how fun it would be to do it. Um, so, let's see, let's just, let's just take an area here. This brush is pretty good. I, I could use this one probably. I wouldn't use anything too small, It'll take you forever. And I do like to work wet. So I'm gonna bring in some water fairly often and not too wet, but wet. I try not to work too wet because I think there's a real possibility that you could end up uh, washing out your pattern. Although I have to admit that the only time I've ever washed out painting that I've done was when I didn't wait the heat set. I've actually had flooding around the edges of 
painting that I've done that was very interesting and did make it through the wash after waiting 24 hours dry time and then properly heat setting it to the manufacturer's instructions. And when I heat set, I don't just move my iron over it for 30 seconds. I'm very careful to hit each area for 30 seconds. And I monitor to make sure that I'm not scorching my fabric or putting too much heat on one area of my ironing board for an excessive amount of time. I kind of pay attention to whether everything is cooling properly before I leave um, after a bunch of heat setting. It's a little muddy. You know, and I've encouraged you to check out um, the color wheel and if you haven't watched it recently I do think it might be a good time to go review the video that I did um, on value because that stuff all plays in here all right let's just start at the top and let's get some green this is going to be a kind of a darker I shouldn't be painting over that little ridge between my tables. There were uh, kids with a mom out in the neighborhood today. She was pulling them on like a toboggan and there was a lot of screaming and laughter and that sure made me feel good. See their little family just proceeding as normal. So, you know, we're going to quilt all over this and that's going to really change the character of what we've got here. So. So I don't know. I don't know how much I need. I may just stop talking because I'm not sure how helpful it is. It's each person's going to have to figure out for themselves how, how they want to lay in their animal. And I have noticed with this I like it where some of that green green shows.
So I really need my cow to be, I think, black. And I kind of want to do his highlights, I guess, in with green in there. And then I want to do the snow, like metallic, with splatters. And maybe I can get some of these really nice, big, um, really nice, big, um, some of these really nice, big, blurry snowflakes, along with the more defined ones that are everywhere, and the snow on his back, we'll see. And we'll see if I end up bringing in any blue and brown. I'm hoping not to. I don't really want my two pieces to be the same. Although it does simplify things when it comes to making uh, choices about thread. Okay, so I'm just going to start over on this ear so that I don't, so that I'm working across and down and I don't so much have to drag my hand through my work. So I want to get some nice, if I go this way, get some nice. My dad was a creative writing teacher at the University of Montana for about five years when I was a kid. And he was a really good uh, poet and a fiction writer and teacher. And he later became a minister, but um, a Methodist minister. But anyhow, um, dad used to say uh, when he would critique my writing, <laughs> and I and I wasn't in love with what he had to say or what he thought I should do that would make my uh, piece make more sense or flow better or uh, get people into the story faster or whatever. He used to say uh, that he didn't expect people to take his criticism and do what he says. But he did want them to think about it. And then his favorite outcome was when they would one-up him and they would take what he said and they would take it in and then they would uh, incorporate that into their own solution that was far better and more them than his idea. Um, and really, I mean, if you're asking someone to uh, teach you and workshop with you and uh, let you know what parts they think are working and what parts they think aren't working, probably the best thing is to be open to some kind of adjustment and uh, extension of what you've, you're doing because if really all you want is praise and for someone to say good work, um, 
you know, that's not really a workshop. And um, not that there aren't some people that just blow you away and all you can say is, I wouldn't change anything because I can't even believe that you came up with that. How come I can't have ideas that good? That does happen. So anyhow, um, you know if your teacher's jealous of what you're doing, that you're doing something right. Um, thanks. <laughs>